And hey, good afternoon. It's uh, four minutes past four. So glad you could be listening live on Spreaker Web Radio. Also, on jo- those joining us on this Skype, a prophetic call. Teresa Croft, along with Wendy Mikesell, uh, Dave Croft, uh, Marilyn Vassar, many others joining us live. Uh, I know we've got some joining us on the KMN Web Radio. Just want to say thank you for joining us. This is a special prophetic call, a time to activate and go forward with words to encourage you, to equip you. So we are delighted to be here. Without any further ado, let me introduce to you our host to this call, Wendy Meitzel. Hey, good afternoon, Wendy. Great to have you. with you and with one another. Lord, we say we don't want to do this by any of our flesh or our understanding or our reasoning, but by your spirit. So we just come through the blood of Yeshua into your presence, Lord, and we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and stir up within us your words, your faith, and your exhortation come forth that we may hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and doing in our time. Lord, we ask for your anointing that breaks yokes to be upon us so that when we do speak your words, it is your presence that goes forth and ministers to all who will hear, and even those that don't hear, that your spirit will go deep within to bring forth this revelation that you have for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hi, Brother Dave. We're going to let you... uh, take over from here, and then I'm going to share a, a, a word okay. that was real confirming for us, Do you want to say anything and that we're going to go from there, so welcome Brother Daniel. Thank you. Greetings in the name of the Lord. Amen. Ooh, wait. Nothing like the Word of God for a now word, huh? <laughs> Nothing like him just making a deposit down inside of you and revealing the things that have been kept secret for thousands of years, right? Nothing like that. But in order to activate that, we have to know how the kingdom of God is really working. And in order to understand how the kingdom of God works, we have to develop a relationship with the Savior. Hallelujah. And that's the doorway that opens us up into learning what salvation really is, what it really means. Hallelujah. God is so good all the time, and all the time God is so good. Excuse us while we shuffle a few things around here. And uh, make a little racket. Praise God. You ready? Yeah. Are we still there? Okay. Hold Can you on. hear us okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Praise God. You're listening, You're listening to Spreaker, to Spreaker Web, Web Radio. Radio. Okay. Of, of, of what he was actually revealing to me was coming from the Spirit. And you know what? I got over and I began to read. Well, the greatest teacher that man's ever known is the Holy Spirit. And then I began to read the words of Christ that said he wouldn't leave us without comfort. And he wouldn't leave us without a witness. And so he says that the Holy Spirit is what he was going to sit, send to us when he ascended back to the Father. Now, Christ was the first one that ministered his whole life that was filled with the Spirit without measure. So he was the prototype of those that were coming. This is part of what Daniel saw in the end times was the kingdom possessors that were understanding their authority and their kingdom authority and understanding that the keys that Christ actually released to them. And so as God began to reveal what was going on, he began to show, he says, okay, now a lot of times what we do is we're not aware... We're taught by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth comes and abides in us. And so when somebody says something and, and there's some doubt that rises up or there's something that just 
it doesn't sit well with you. We, we say, oh, that just didn't sit well in my spirit. What we should say is, I felt the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth inside of me, show me something was wrong with that statement or with that action, okay? And what we've been taught, though, is is the the propaganda, if you will, of ministry okay what we've been taught is ministry is not really ministry what we've been taught is worship is not really worship what we've been taught is is truth is not really truth okay and and i've been sharing some things with you from isaiah jeremiah and ezekiel and i've been talking to you about the prophet the pastor and the singers and i've been telling you that these are the ones that have led the people astray and the word says it okay and then when you get over in the new testament second thessalonians what the people did that altered the word of God, what they did was they gave you, just like the enemy meant for them to give you, they gave you a partial truth. Right. When you begin to expose and understand the wickedness that's set up in Washington, D.C., and you begin to understand that those people that are in charge of us, called the government of the United States of America, you begin to understand that there's a wicked plot and there's a, uh, there's a spiritual force of darkness that rules and reigns and runs very deep into the veins of everybody that's up there. What the American people should do, the kingdom possessors of God, what they should do, okay? Mm-hmm. N- don't don't even put country with it. Okay. Don't put American. Put the kingdom possessors of the kingdom of heaven, what they should do in the name of God is they should cleanse that place up there and get rid of every single one of those people that call themselves anything to do with a politician. They should be rid themselves of them, okay? And the first thing they should tear down is the Federal Reserve that has stole true Millions of dollars from the American people and promoted a lie. Okay, and so the apocalypse of finances. This is what I want to talk to you about. This is their motivation to get people to move into a spiritual realm of fear. And when I was reading and sharing with you from Revelation 21, and I was sharing with you that the number one sin of our day is fear. That's because the Holy Spirit was showing me that the apocalypse that they're bringing on the financial system, it's concocted. It's a lie. There's been too much new wealth created during this downturn, during this time that they said is a time of light. There's been too much new wealth created for it to really be a true recession, for it to really be a true prototype depression. But what's been created is, 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 is a facade. What's been created is artificial. And for them to go in and to bail out financial institutions instead of the people showed the wickedness of a government that's in control. But we brought it on ourselves because instead of looking at God as the creator and God as our provider, we look to government. And so government became an idol in a lot of people's life. Government became God to a lot of people. Okay, God is not government and government is not God, yet God has a governing authority. And the legislative uh, nature of God is that of love. Yet he gave us loving parameters that we were to abide in and under in order to reap the greatest possible blessings. Evil people came in and changed the word of God. They altered the word of God. They altered everything. Why? And they only give partial truths. Why? So that they can keep the masses blind and so that they can control them and move them into what they want, they desire. Okay? There has never, ever, ever in the ministry of Christ on earth, there has never, ever, ever been any proof showing that Christ was a millionaire. That Christ was a rich man. Christ gave up his riches. It's just the opposite of what's been promoted in the prosperity gospel. Okay, The healing gospel doesn't line up with the word. It's never been about one person Amen. except for Christ. He said that you would do. Who? Amen. Those that believed in his name. Okay, Whoever believed in his name. Today in our Christian society, it's those who have been trained under so-and-so. Those have, who have been, uh, unless you've been taught how to do this through so-and-so's ministry or such-and-such university or yada, yada, you follow what I'm saying? But Christ said the greatest teacher that we would have is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, Christ also tells us emphatically that, that he was going to send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would lead us into all truth because the Holy Spirit would be inside of us. Okay, this is a truth that the body of Christ has never taught to the fullest extent that Christ meant for it to be taught. And the reason they haven't taught it is because they want you to remain in darkness. They want you to remain a subject of theirs. They want you to be enslaved into their uh, 
good soil. They're good ground. Okay, the good ground and the vineyard belongs to my father. He planted the vineyard. He supplied the vine. We're the fruit on the vine. And in order to remain fruit on the vine, we have to be pruned. And we have to follow him with everything that's within us. Man wants you to follow man. Man and religion are the same. They want you to understand only a limit, partial truth. They don't want you to... It's not the fullness of the kingdom. It is not the fullness of the kingdom. They want you to be subjects to them. They want you to be enslaved to them. Unless you're walking where they want you to walk, you're not in any way part of their... Their kingdom. If you preach anything other than what they have propagated, even if it's a lie, then you're ostracized quickly. You're out of of order. They want you to submit to a system that is not wrong. I mean, that's not right. Now, they have been wrong from the beginning, okay? And here's the problem with the Sabbath, okay? Sunday's not the Sabbath. They told you the Holy Covenant, Ezekiel teaches you that that was one of the final sins of mankind, was that they changed the Holy Covenant. And the Holy Covenant that he was talking about was the Sabbath that God created for man, okay? On the Sabbath, you have some uh, serious liturgical things, if you will, Legal things, if you will. The law of the covenant of God says on the Sabbath, you wasn't to go anywhere. Okay? Saturday, from Friday at sunset to Saturday at sunset. God's day begins in the evening. And we know this. The evening and the morning were the first day. Uh, as you understand scripture and the Sabbath, you understand that Sabbath is a day where man just rests and just fellowships with God in his own tabernacle. Okay? Now, the world wants you to think that going to church and being pressed all day long for that is truth, and that's worship. The truth is, each individual has to worship God in truth and in spirit, okay? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that you need some special person up playing some special instrument with some special anointed voice to lead you into the presence of God. If you need that, you don't have the proper relationship with your Savior. That's from the old design, the design that we inherited from Babylon. Actually. Right, and it, this is Babylon. Right, and I and I understand that. And so we're talking about a reformation in the, a prophetic way, but it doesn't mean destroying Now, when you churches. say reformation, you have to be careful because any of those are key words that people okay. look for to but tell you that you've missed the mark. churches and I'm pastors, not disagreeing with I'm what not, you're saying. Uh, it's, it's, that, not, it's not, it's not, we've never had the proper pastors. We've not had the shepherds. That's understand. what God's word says. We I'm didn't talking. have the shepherds. He said he would smite the shepherd and right. the sheep would flee. Okay. Now, what we're getting ready to see is truth from the word of God come out about tribulation. Because God's given us a space and a time to repent. And to turn back to him. But the word was so plain from Christ. He said I'm going to show great signs in the heavens. And in the earth. Now what was he showing signs about? He's showing signs about truth. He's showing signs about who he is. Okay. Now it's up to each of us. To find our way to him. Okay. God has never been lost. Man how do we lost. find our way to How him? do we find our way to God? True he worship. says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently You'll shall find, find me. He said, the hour is coming, and now is here, when those who worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and in truth. For the Father is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. The enemy has presented a partial truth to you, and he's bound you down by religion and liturgical things, and he said, you can't go anywhere because you're in this body this carnal nature but god is god said your body soul and spirit christ said the father is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit let me tell you something what happens when you enter into worship is you enter into the fourth dimension you enter into the spiritual realm and you get into the presence of god and the holy angels and you become charged in an atmosphere of the spiritual realm and you and true revelation begins to come true understanding begins to come they don't want you to get there. They want you to have an emotional high. They want you to have some kind of shaking and jerking experience, which is described in the in the in the book of Acts and which is described in the Gospels as what happened when Christ was delivered to the demoniac. They often throw themselves down and wallowed and foamed at the mouth. 
and screamed and hollered. And so in our day and age, we look around and we say, wow, this experience that people say they're having is pretty much like those of the demoniac. Okay? And so we go back and we reevaluate the truth that we thought we had. Jesus, Christ himself, Yeshua, said, Yahushua, okay? He said himself that the truth shall set you free. And you, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free free okay people are having a hard time with understanding what is truth because they're caught and caked in the this old system caught in a serious place of religion yeah. and, and the religion says bondage. the religion says judgmentally if you don't go to church on wednesday and sunday then you're damned okay and you're not doing what's right okay and god said through his son i am spirit and those who worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. And the first thing you hear when you walk inside the door is if you're not giving, if you're not tithing, you're not blessed. If you're not giving to their to their means, to their ends. Now the word of God teaches us that the third year was the year of tithing. And it teaches us that the tithe should be separated into four distinct parts, which was 25% of a tenth. And that, that's what they called it, a tenth. Okay. So if you looked at a quarter of a tenth, you're looking at two and a half percent. And it was to go to the fatherless, the widow, the stranger, and the Levite, or the... The past priest. Well, priest. no, I, I disagree. I say it should go to the apostle, because the headship okay. of the church well, was set up as, a, as an apostolic. Okay. Well, we're already functioning out of order. We're functioning as a preacher, or a pastor, instead of the, the anointing came for the apostle, the prophet, the, prophet, the, evangelist, the evangelist, the preacher... Yeah. The or teacher, pastor, pastor and the teacher. And then the teacher. Okay. So we have everything out of order. Uh, he gave us the five-fold ministry to do what? To increase the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Okay. So if the kingdom of heaven is trying to be increased through the pastor or the preacher instead of through the apostolic way, and you can take the word and you can move it out of context, okay? Now, this is to our shame because not many have been willing to, do to that. do their reasonable service. Now, the reason I say reasonable service is Romans 12, 1 and 2 teaches us that that is our reasonable service. Whatever he calls you to do, he's equipped you and enabled you and empowered yeah. you to do. And there's a certain thing that you lay down your life for him. If he tells you to fast one day, you fast one day. If he tells you don't fast, you don't fast. But if he, he tells you in the word that the, the time and the hour comes upon you when you must fast and pray because certain things don't, they don't happen. In your right. life without prayer and fasting. That's he right. said that the disciples came to him and asked him, said, why were we powerless over this demon and this child? And he said, well, certain things only come about through prayer and fasting. fasting. Okay. So there we understand the power of deliverance of a stronghold in a person. Mm -hmm. A stronghold is demonic possession. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what's being taught now is Christians need to go to Christian counselors to have deliverance ceremonies performed over them. Okay, that is not a true exorcism. Mm. Teaching a person, okay, how to be demonically delivered has never been and nor ever will be a deliverance exorcist. Mm. It will never happen that way. Christ gave you the authority over the demons and he told you, cast out demons, mm -hmm. heal the sick, cleanse the leper. Right. Okay, and he says, raise the dead. Raise freely the dead. you have received, receive freely Give. Man's way says you've got to be taught how to submit to the Holy Spirit so you know how to be slain in the Spirit. You've got to go to the school of prophecy so you can learn how to prophesy. So in the process of this, you, you have the chance of being misunderstood because... No, what your understanding is, is between you and God. Right. It don't matter what I they think. What they've that. done is brought familiar spirits, kundalini spirits, channeling spirits, oh, demons sad. of all it's sources sad. and all sites, and they brought them in right in the midst of the tabernacle of the living God. He right. said the holy temple was defiled. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're not even getting into the meaty stuff of the DNA that the, the, the perverting of the DNA that's happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not even getting into the deep meaty stuff about the Nephilims and their agenda and the agenda of, of the enemy. Cause he had a plan too. Okay. Yeah. He had a plan too. He said, be not ignorant of the schemes 
you know, of the devil. What's interesting, though, is, okay, I got someone like Anna, who's 15, who hasn't been caked in religion, okay? And so she's just a lover of God, and as out of that love comes revelation. Right. And then someone like me, who's near 50, who's been, had her caked of religion, of a certain religion, and then did have the freedom to walk in the spirit and then come under some great teachers and uh, uh, you know of the of the word and and then to come to a place where as as I walk in a new dimension of really seeking the kingdom of God and hearing directly from the throne of God it says if I ask for wisdom he'll give me wisdom and then to realize how the kingdom of God shakes everything upside down because Really, it shakes everything upside right because the system that was designed by Babylon, which is upside down. So then you've got to free people who think they're doing it right, who feel like they're doing it right. It's not about right and wrong. It's about what does God say? So Christ got up and he went out and he taught the people. And many times it says he went into the synagogue. Okay, and, and yeah. he was revealing truth. Okay, right. and they were so jealous of him. They didn't like him. They didn't like him, and they were yeah. so jealous they of him. They said, "Now, him. how in the world?" Even at twelve years old, they said, "How could he, right, being a child, have so much wisdom?" Okay, and so we're beginning to understand some key things that have caused us to err tremendously. Everything's based on an. Em- it, it's in the emotional realm, which is in the carnality of man, sure and this is. is a dangerous thing. It's in the fleshly realm, and and we are warned uh, that the greatest enemy that we have against us in ourselves is our flesh. So, so the enemies come in with partial truth, and he's got you to walk in. Okay, if you go to church and you teach these little kids these Bible stories. You have presented truth and you've done a good deed and you feel so good about yourself when in fact, just presenting the truth is nothing that's nearly compared to those that are presenting the truth with their lifestyle. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And and what we've seen through the years is we've seen these same people that are teaching these kids these Bible stories turn around and molest these kids. Okay, mm-hmm. I have story after story yeah. after story of people that have come to me that said deacon so and so, Sunday school teacher so and so, raped me, molested me, boys with boys, men with boys, uh, men molesting little girls. I mean, I've just there's been just this broad spectrum. Okay, if this was really such an anointed place of the Holy Spirit, how could these other evil spirits get inside there? Okay, so that's one of the key elements that we look for and we say, wait a minute. Something's out of order. Something's out of order. Something's not right. Because when Ananias and Sapphira came before the apostles, came before the apostles with a lie, they fell down dead. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, there was such an anointing of holiness upon them. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit was so flowing out of them like the rivers of living waters. That they weren't just lying to the apostles. The Holy Spirit was there. They were lying to the Holy Spirit. So what does someone do who wants to break free and and really truly seek the kingdom of God, be the kingdom of God, but they feel a little trapped. They kind of, it is comfortable. Or they feel like, hey, are you, you're just one of those people that is, you know, saying bad things about all these good ministers. You know, you're just one of them. How do you help someone who really it's not truly... about It's not about putting anybody else no, down. Really, it's about presenting the truth. You know but that. it's also about exposing those that are teaching people okay. lies. I, I mean, you and I went through this thing where we saw this same person come on the TV every time they'd have a share on this certain TV station, and this same person would present the same means by which we'd heard for, I don't know, what, five years in a row? They Broadcast is what you're and, and they the rebroadcast the same teaching, trying to get the people to, to give money based on much. based on buying a miracle or buying a blessing. And the truth is, <clears throat> God's blessings are free to His children. Okay, here here's the key. But most people with itchy ears, looking for a word mm. or looking for a miracle, mm-hmm. have opened themselves up to the delusion of deception of our day, mm. because. What happens is when you're in relationship with him and you're walking in that relationship, what happens is these miracles flow out of you. 
Right. Automatically, they just flow out of you. As you cling, as to, you the vine, cling to the vine, as you cling to the to the source. Creator, as you cling to Him and you worship Him in truth and in spirit, what begins to happen is His nature begins to overtake you. And as His, as his nature overtakes you, the Spirit of truth, which is His Holy Spirit that's living inside of you, begins to flow out of you like rivers of living water. And so what happens is those works are produced. It's not you that's producing the works. It's He that is abiding in you that's flowing out of you that's producing the works okay? okay now this is very important <clears throat> okay so the only one that can make a person new mm -hmm. is christ Amen. okay and it says and it very well clearly says that in second corinthians five seventeen. if any man be in christ jesus he is a new creature old things have passed away behold all things have become new paul learned the depth of that grace Okay, when he stepped forward and he says, I have wronged no man. Now, when God sent um, the, the messenger to pray for him, okay, mm -hmm. uh, when he sent Ananias over there to pray for him, Ananias said, you want me to go pray for who? That's the one that's killing, killing all of us. Father, you want me to go pray for him? Christ, you want me to go pray for him? Okay, so you begin to understand uh, the first thing that this, this person had to deal with about the new creation was fear. Okay. Oh, wow, that's good. So and, I was just and, and you know, you, Christ tells you, and, and you know, Christ tells you, point blank. Fear. He, uh, Fear okay, he tells you, things. point. Okay, now, we understand that people do not need to proclaim what God is doing and has done through them. We understand that people can see the evidence of the new nature of Christ flowing through a really born again experience now we say born again because christ taught nicodemus that a man must be born again okay and so to understand the power of the new creation to to repent means to turn from that old behavior and so as we begin to understand the power of christ the nature of christ and the power of christ they're all the same they come upon a person you take on his nature he right. says I love what Peter Peter Elliot said. He said, <clears throat> uh, you Jim know, Elliot. I mean, excuse me, Jim Elliot. Yeah, Jim Elliot. Uh, he says, uh, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot gain, he cannot or what keep. he cannot keep to gain what he can never lose. Right. Okay, and so what he was saying was, I've laid down my life for, for Christ. Mm -hmm. My life is hidden when, in Christ. Okay, and what he said was, Christ said, if you try to keep your life, you're going to lose it. Oh. Okay? okay. If you give up your life, you gain it. it. So what Sorry Jim Elliot point. did was he paraphrased the words of Christ. Yeah. Okay. So Christ said this. He said we must take up our cross daily and follow him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now in religion, it says if you are a Christian, then you will do these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is liturgical. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is religion. Mm -hmm. It says you will do these things. You'll go to church on Sunday. You'll go to church on Wednesday. You will volunteer. You will, you, you will submit to them. Programs. And you will do their programs. And you'll be a part of... <clears throat> okay. Not that submitting is good, but... Submitting is a very yeah, good thing it's if it's done good. in the right manner the to right the Holy order. Spirit. In the right order. order. Okay. Now, I understand it's that on. God's not... Listen, there, do you know how many denominations there are and how many churches there are in America? It says a divided house cannot stand. The, divi the house is divided. The Baptists are over here saying, mm -hmm. you people that are talking in tongues are of the devil. The Pentecostal Pentecostals now are saying, well, we shouldn't just speak in tongues when we want to. Okay, so there's not even... In the, in the body that's going on, what we're seeing is fragmented. He said a body divided will not stand. Mm. Okay. You've got one person over here preaching that you're going to be raptured out before you see the, the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. And, and you're going to, Christ is going to descend. And you're going to, go, the truth is the presence of Christ is so bright. Okay. That if he was to appear, he'd burn us all up. No doubt. Okay. You know what I'm saying? His glory. Yeah, his glory. Now, what's so amazing is as a friend of him, he can come to you as an individual, mm -hmm. okay? And you're not, and his glory 
He can conceal his glory. Mm -hmm. He can meet with you face, face to face. Okay. Now, in the holiness of who he truly is, if he were to appear for the whole right. world to see him, we wouldn't, be able to stand. we wouldn't be able to stand to look upon his face. Right, I understand that. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And what, what would happen is that we would have to be changed into that incorruptible body right. in order to be able to view him. Yeah. Okay, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, people take this out of context from the word. And the Illuminati now, or... Instead of saying the Illuminati that some people say don't exist, let's say the Freemasonry, hmm, okay, okay, that believe Lucifer is a good entity, yeah. that he's an angel of light, they, they and he's, he's true, that. wholesome, yeah. and virtuous, okay, and these people inside Masonry or Freemasonry, okay, so the lies that they're teaching, okay, and, they, and that they have taught, at this point, they're being exposed, and so there's something new that's coming out. Okay, so, they're they're bragging about teaching a false doctrine about the tribulation and the rapture. Okay, and they said that they did it to meet their own means and their own goals. Well, what is their goals? Well, their creed's been set up in Elberton, Georgia. There's a stone. There's stones that have been set up in the encryption. And if you will, the, the scribing that's on them starts off with the population shall be reduced, shall not exceed, if you will, 500 million. Okay, so what they've done is they've come up with their own creed. It's a mockery. It's blasphemy. They rule by fear. They rule by fear. So their Ten Commandments, their Ten Commandments, if you will, is what they've set up in mockery to the Creator. Will they exceed what the Creator is going to do? No. Is he in control? Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Bring the God and so down. we what we do is we bring this apocalyptic fear that they have been walking under. We bring it into the judgment of right. the obedience of the That's word. Good. He That's says, good. Bring every thought into captivity. Right. Okay. And this is part of your reasonable service in being all that you can be for him is to know when that spirit of truth comes upon you and you realize you've been taught something that's not true. See, there's always been something in my spirit that says, wait a minute, God's got a plan of escape. He's going to run into the cover of darkness at night. He's going to come in. He's going to steal something away. Wait a minute. One of his commandments, the eighth one says, thou shalt not steal. And God's going to do something that breaks his own commandment. He's going to steal something out of the earth under the cover of darkness, under the cover of midnight. Uh, this is, we got to run away from trouble. That just doesn't sound like my creator. No. At all. That's where they okay. engage. And so this is what's happened inside I'm my so spirit. God has said to me very emphatically, now, did I hear an audible voice? I've heard him speak before, yes. Have I seen signs and wonders? Absolutely. Does he always come in and sit down in the chair and talk to me audibly like I'm talking to you now? No. He has an inner witness on the inside. And it's called the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth sometimes will tell me, go to this scripture, go to that right. scripture. And he begins to show me what he's given me before to preach without even having the scripture references. He's let me preach on it and then showed me where it was at. Right. Okay. Now you're going to have people that are going to try to capitalize on everything that's happened. Okay. Because we're in a society in a world that says, if you don't have X amount of dollars, you're nobody. You are somebody by the amount of wealth and fame you have, mm. okay? Now, there are people that are coming out now uh, that are saying there's no such thing as a human being. I heard a friend of mine's stepdaddy say it one time, okay? This is, we're being introduced in, in uh, Hollywood is introducing us and has been for several years into alien activity, and we're being familiarized with channeling spirits. There's no such thing as an alien. There are fallen angels, these are deceptive demons. What we're being exposed to now, they're trying to get us to become involved with it. Well, actually, if you've become a part of a system that exempts the sons, you've already become a part of being involved with it. Okay, And this is a harsh saying for some. If you're serving in a church that has a tax-free status to the United States government, they have entered into a contractual, it is a contractual agreement. It is a covenant with the government of the United States of America that says you acquiesce their behaviors and because they've given you this special status, you will in no way, 
That's tough. For you some. will in no way right. discuss anything that's political, and you right. will keep a neutral stand, and you will not try to influence your that's people right. in any way whatsoever to turn them towards one politician or one political view or another, but you will remain neutral. Now, Christ gave me some revelation on this recently when he says, well, who are the sons that are exempt? When he began to expose and he began to talk to me and he began to show me the things that's wrong with a church, okay, that has a tax-free status that really acquiesces their behavior. Now you're seeing a fight in the Supreme Courts by all these religious entities that say, wait a minute, you can't force us to to pay for birth control or, or abortions. And, and But really, if you're a part of this system and you've paid any kind of taxes, you've already been funding abortions through Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. Okay, So you see the deception and the lie that's come in has come in because we've not made the changes that God would want us to make. Okay, And this is, to our government when they hear this, this is anarchy. Mm-hmm. Okay, Because your resistance... You're teaching something that goes against their principles. Their principles are to enslave you into bondage of sin, wickedness, abomination, and evil. Okay, the abomination should have been the last one. Okay, first it starts out as transgression, sin, evil, wickedness, and abomination. There's your five stages that they take you to. Okay, and as you become enveloped into their system, you fund what they want to do. It used to be we the people. It's now we the government. Right. You follow the, you see what's happening is the prophetic clock of God has begun to move. Now what he said he would do is he would, he would show signs and wonders in the earth and in heaven before his return. He's starting to bring out things that have been hid for thousands of years. That's where we come full circle. Someone says, okay, this is all heaven then, dude. Where, where, where do I start? Where do I, I want to be part of the kingdom of God. Bring this full circle and wrap it to the point one. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking for four mm-hmm. points, but bring this. This is all, could be really heavy new stuff for someone. Mm-hmm. Bring it all to where's the starting point for someone to walk. What does God say in his word? about what he expects. He expects you to worship him in truth and spirit. He expects you to love justice and mercy and to walk walk humbly with your God. He expects you to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we're starting to get a principle now as we begin to understand what God says. God said if you see your brother in need and you shut up your bowels, but but it's within your power to help him and enable him, then it's sin to you. He who knows to do good that doeth it not is sin. Okay. The biggest thing that, that we see that has caused so much destruction is the smallest member of our body, which is our tongue. Okay. Mm. James said the tongue was the same thing as a rudder on a giant ship. Mm. Okay. And he says the thing that has ripped apart and torn the blessings of abundant life away from God's children is the tongue. And the tongue comes forth as harsh and judgmental. And, you know, it's easy to bless somebody. Oh, Tracy, you didn't put neither one of my things in the freezer, baby. Mm. There they sit on the table. Okay, so you see how I lovingly said that? Now, uh, if, if I was in my flesh, I would have yelled and said, you know, Tracy, you know, Tracy. That's treatment from the automobile accident that I had that I have to follow the doctor's orders. And in order to get better, he has given me and prescribed me some things with prayer. Because this guy's a Christian doctor. He said, with prayer. Now, did I invite the attack? No. Did I have an open gate? No. What was I doing? I was about the Father's business. Now, who could it possibly make mad that, that I was doing the Father's business? Well, the enemy. He doesn't want you to. He doesn't want you to do the father's business. He doesn't want you to do the father's bidding. Okay, and so what happens is, is God moves in supernaturally. Yeah, the other freezer would be better. So God moves in supernaturally to equip us, enable us, and empower us. And the first thing we learn how to do is what God wants us to do. He says our reasonable service, right? Mm-hmm. Our reasonable service is what. Is to know the will of God, to walk out the will of God, and to do what He's called us to do. That's our reasonable service. Okay? Wow. It's so amazing when God moves as only God can move, we begin to accomplish things that we could never accomplish under our own strength. Corporately, 
God wants us to do it. Just stop it. And those of you uh, joining us uh, on KMM Radio, and those of you joining us on Skype, we're going to go ahead and play music for our Spreaker uh, web radio and let you guys regroup for part two. So glad you're joining us. This is Laura Reinhardt with This Is My Cry, as uh, we'll come back and hear from Wendy.
hope you enjoyed that. Laura Reinhardt with This Is My Cry, KMN, Skype Prophetic Call, Part 1. More information now. We help you spread your message with the Kingdom Messenger Network.com. Hey, check it out, Laura Reinhardt on iTunes. Support her as we spread her message of amazing music. Laura Reinhardt, that's R H I N E H A R T. Coming up, you got it. We're going to go right into part two. Marilyn and Dave chatting and, and uh, the gang over in the Skype. You might hear them in the background. And you've been listening to special Spread Your Message, a Skype prophetic call on the KMNN Web Radio Network. See you for part two, coming up.